regular lecture series day. So before we start again, I'd like to give you our president for ang ating welcome, welcome remarks po. President Press Bong. Hi. Hello. Uh, thank you, Sir Eric. So again, hello, everyone. Have a wonderful day. Okay. So uh, on behalf of the Philippine uh, Institute of Civil Engineers, uh, National Board of Directors, I would like to welcome you all and take this opportunity to uh, thank you for attending this third day session of the Philippine of the PIC webinar lecture series, which is focused on uh, geotechnical engineering. So this is one of the fields or areas of specialization in civil engineering. This activity is a way to convey additional learnings to all of us, our members, while we are on uh, commun community quarantine and as a way of appreciation for your support to the PIC's initiatives of helping government and our people fight this COVID-19 pandemic that we are all experiencing right now. Also, we are talking about the new normal. And in PICE, we believe that online learning such as this webinar is, the, is one way of delivering the continuing professional development programs to our members. Maybe our future regional technical conferences and seminars until uh, our government would again allow us to conduct mass gatherings. Thus, uh, I would like to inform you that the 2020 National Media Convention in General Santo City this June is already canceled. Hopefully, we can already conduct our 46th annual national convention this year end if the situation would already permit. At this point, I would like to thank our resource speaker, Engineer Adrian A. Madrazo, sir. Our panelists, moderator, Dr. Mark Zarco, uh, sir. Our uh, chair of the PICE specialty, specialty division for uh, geotechnical engineering. And uh, the National Board of Directors, the Interspecialty Group Committee chaired by uh, Director Eric Sison, the Student Affairs Committee chaired by Director Uy. Soon, we will also have a webinar uh, lectures uh, for our student members. And uh, also, I would like to thank our Secretariat for making this webinar lecture series possible. Lastly, for everyone, same with the past two days, I would like to reiterate my wishes to one and all. First, to be holy. Let us contemplate the power of prayer to the Almighty for the good of everyone and for a miraculous end of this pandemic. And second, to be healthy. Live a healthy lifestyle and to follow the protocols of government to stay safe. And lastly, to be happy, yeah? to be happy, happy with our families, our colleagues, with our lives, happy to be of service, and above all, happy with what we are doing day by day. And right now, happy to learn from this webinar session. Okay, so with that, again, thank you. Just sit and relax. Have a fruitful webinar. Sir Eric, please. Thank you, Press Bong. So happy lang, happy, happy muna tayo habang nakikinig sa ating webinar lecture. Yeah. So uh, before I introduce our moderator, uh, EJ, please uh, share yung house rules so we can go over again the house rules for today. There are some changes and I will just like to read again the house rules to you. So number one, of course, uh, mem the audio as well as the video will be turned off for all of the participants. So as they can uh, focus both, so they can focus on the presentation as well as the presentation, the speaker can also, shall not be disturbed. Uh, all questions shall be sent through the Q&A button. Take note, uh, yung questions yung po, 
ang i-entertain po na questions are those questions that are posted dun sa Q&A button. It's below your screen. Na magkatabi po yung chat tsaka Q&A. So please post all questions related to the topic dun sa Q&A button. Uh, questions in the chat box shall not be entertained. Panelists shall screen or our moderators shall, shall screen the questions and uh, shall only read three to five. Actually, depending po dun sa time, if we have enough time, we can we can answer all the questions uh, as long as we have enough time. Uh, uh, just note that also yung, yung questions po, you can, we encourage you to post your questions even even if even even the while the lecture is also uh, still ongoing so that hindi po ma-flood yung yung Q&A box ho natin so kahit na nag nag nagpre-present pa po yung speaker post lang po yung questions nyo. the the moderator will screen all the questions uh, instead of posting it right after right after the the presentation other questions that would not that uh, was not addressed during the webinar can be Email through zoomwebinar.pic at gmail.com and shall be addressed by the presenter later on via email then. This, uh, this session is broadcasted via FB Live. Please visit the PIC national official page with the name Philippine Institute of Civil Engineers, Inc. Uh, the comments and captions again will be disabled to FB Live so as the, the viewers can focus on the presentation. Now, a poll and evaluation of the webinar must be answered by all attendees at is, as it will form part of the submission to the CPD Council. Link uh, to the evaluation will, will be sent to your email within 24 hours after the presentation. After answering the, the evaluation, you can already download the material. So right now, we're medyo, medyo please bear with us. Medyo manual kasi yung in, in isa lahat ng participants sending the email so if we have 300 plus uh, participants isa isa hong sinesend yung link so antayin nyo lang po uh, currently the secretary is already sending out the link for the day one um, webinar so you will when you open when pag nakuha nyo yung link pag nakuha nyo yung email once you click the link there will, there will be a google form for the evaluation of that particular uh, webinar once you fill it up and once you submit it tsaka po lalabas yung link or yung download link for you to get the materials during the presentation. So, uh, abangan nyo lang pa within the day, baka matapos na po yung for the day one. Uh, registered attendees shall be given the link. Uh, no certificate shall be given to those who weren't uh, able to attend the lecture. So, only those that are right here now watching the webinar, registered and watching the webinar, will receive the certificate. The certificate may be given at the end of this week, after all of the webinars are completed, we can be will be sending uh, an email to you. So probably we can send uh, for one person who attended several of the webinars can get a single email with all the certificates of attendance. So antayin nyo lang din po yun. Probably baka next week na po yun. Uh, lastly, uh, if, you, if you haven't filled up the membership up the up membership updating the membership profile updating. Please go to the link again there in the house rules so you can fill up the membership uh, profile nyo po. Once, you do, once you've done it already, hindi na po kailangan mag-register or mag-sign mag up ulit dyan. But again, uh, you need to sign up in order for you to receive the link for the, for the poll, for the materials, as well as for the certificate. Pero pag nagawa nyo na po ng isang beses yun, okay na po yun. Okay, so uh, that's it for the house rules. Uh, by the way, I'd like to also welcome uh, our PRC Civil Engineering Board Chairperson, Ma'am Praxedes Bernardo. She's also with us today. Since day one po, and kasama rin po natin siya dito. So uh, let's give, uh, let's please welcome. Hi, Eric. Her. Good afternoon to everyone. Good afternoon po, Ma'am. All right, so uh, our moderator for today is none other than Dr. Mark Albert Zarco professor in the Institute of Civil Engineering of UP Diliman, and he is also the chair of the Interspecialty Group, uh, Geotechnical Engineering Specialization. So, Sir Mark, kayo na po. Okay, uh, good afternoon to everybody, and thank you very much for taking the time to attend this webinar this afternoon uh, regarding 
technical engineering and specifically the applications of geosynthetics to civil engineering. Our speaker for this afternoon, who I really thank for accepting our invitation, is a good friend of mine, which I've known for more than 13 years, uh, engineer Adrian Madrasso, who is currently with Macaferi. Uh, prior to joining Macaferi in 2009, he um, was an engineer, he was a design engineer with Bauer Philippines. Uh, he has a master's from the National Taiwan University in civil engineering and majoring in geotechnical engineering. So I, I would uh, like to invite Adrian to uh, give this webinar this afternoon on the applications of geosynthetics uh, to uh, civil engineering. So uh, I'd like to give the floor now to Adrian. Thank you, Dr. Sarko. Uh, Good afternoon uh, to Sir Rene, Sir Eric. Good afternoon. So we have, I think, attendees also from other countries. Maayong adlaw sa mga bisaya. Okay, and maayong naimbag ng adlaw sa mga Ilocano as well as sa kabangtangan naman po. Maya pagat panapun. Okay, so... For today, I'll, I am tasked to discuss to you uh, the applications of geosynthetics in civil, civil engineering. Okay, let, let just me let uh, allow me to to share my, my slide. Okay. I hope everyone can see my slide. Is my audio okay? Dog Zarko, okay lang po ba yung sound? Okay. Yes, it's okay. Okay, so salamat. Ayan. So, the, the, the presentation is geosynthetic applications to civil engineering. Uh, this topic is very close to me because I've been teaching uh, geosynthetics in geotechnical engineering uh, for the past five years at the University of the East Manila. So uh, part of this uh, presentation also uh, is uh, you know, a culmination of what I've learned so far in the past 10 years uh, while working uh, with, with, uh, with a, a supplier of geosynthetic materials. Okay, for this afternoon's presentation, okay, uh, I hope I'll not get you bored but these are the five chapters of the presentation. Uh, we'll start with the introduction about our topic. Then the second chapter is devoted to the different types, basically major types of geosynthetics. Then uh, as we go on, uh, chapter three will be devoted to the functions. Okay? So, ano po ba yung mga major functions na pinang, uh, kung saan natin ginagamit yung mga geosynthetics natin. At the same time, uh, the design considerations, which are very important, lalo na uh, marami po sa atin designers. So the, 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 I'll give you some idea on how or what are the considerations that we need to consider when we use geosynthetics in our designs. Uh, so majority of the topic, uh, I mean the, the flow of the presentation will be about this chapter, chapter number three. Then after that, um, I have listed some projects uh, in the Philippines uh, and uh, some some are in other countries that use uh, use synthetics. And last but not the least, we'll do a summary of our presentation so that everyone will be uh, uh, put to, all together. Okay. So let's start with chapter one, which is about our introduction. So. Before we go further, I'd like to define first what is what we mean, do we mean by geosynthetics. Basically, geosynthetics are products made from polymers or plastics, okay? and uh, these are used together with soil or earth or rock, and uh, we use this as an integral part or uh, a component of our civil engineering project or structure. <clears throat> and in the world of geosynthetics, majority of them 
are made of polymers, okay, plastics. But there are also geosynthetics that are made from steel, as well as fiberglass. And uh, some are made of um, nat natural materials, which are like uh, coconut fibers. I think everyone is very <clears throat> with natural materials such as coconut fibers and jute or palm fibers, for example. So, of, uh, so any materials that you use together with soil or rock, and are actually called geosynthetics. And uh, when it comes to the polymers that we use to manufacture geosynthetics, uh, there are six major types of polymers that we can use. First off, um, you, uh, the, what we call poly, uh, the vinyls, okay, which was invented in 1927. Uh, if you're familiar with PVC, it's similar. So uh, we also use vinyls uh, as uh, a polymer for the manufacture of biosynthetics. We also have polystyrene or the, uh, the chemical name for uh, foam. Okay, so ever since foam was created, uh, they're also being used as part of the <clears throat> production of biosynthetics. We also have polyamide or nylon, okay? And nowadays, majority of the polymers that we use are made either from polyester, polyethylene, and polypropylene, which are what we call um, polyolefins. Okay, um, we need to know the, the the polymer type of geosynthetics that we're using because the polymers dictate the strength and du durability of our materials. Again, uh, since these are all made of plastics. Uh, it's, it's better that we know uh, what are their strengths and what are their weaknesses, uh, particularly because the, the, the plastics are also made from different types. So in, in, in choosing the polymers, we need, to, we need to consider three important factors. Number one is the creep resistance. It is the resistance of the polymer against sustained load. Then we also have to consider the insulation damage resistance because we'll be using it in our construction sites. So we have to uh, factor in the damages that might, that might occur during our installation. And last but not the least uh, is chemical, biological, and thermal degradation resistances. So these are all very important when we choose what, which type of polymer would suit for a certain application and uh, for a specific project that we have. Nowadays, majority of uh, users or, or designers would ask me how long will geosynthetics last? And uh, basically, since majority of geosynthetics are made of polymers, they are built to last. However, of course, uh, as, as um, like Superman, okay, na, uh, similar to Superman, who was very powerful, there's always a, a kryptonite, okay, to any materials. And uh, I have listed here uh, some of the factors that affect the properties of our geosynthetics. Okay, let's discuss one by one. So first off, we have the UV, okay, ultraviolet. Okay, when I say UV, um, we know that it's uh, sunlight, okay? Sunlight is an important cause of degradation of, our, of, of all organic materials, including the polymers from which our geosynthetics are manufactured from. Therefore, it's important that uh, you, we need to cover or we, we need to put soil or another geosynthetic for, uh, for example, um, when we're using polypropylene materials, because polypropylene uh, needs extra protection against UV uh, and uh, they should be covered within 14 days after uh, being used. Unlike uh, polyesters, for example, they can be allowed longer exposure times. So there are pros and cons when it comes to uh, this uh, exposure, UV exposure. The next, what we have is actually temperature. Uh, in, in terms of temperature, 
we're talking about extremely high temperatures. Normal temperatures will not really affect our geosynthetics. synthetics. And uh, basically temperatures are, are used as an accelerators. Okay, these are being used as accelerators um, when it comes to degradation mechanisms such as um, sunlight, oxidation, okay, hydrolysis, chemical reaction, radiation, biological uh, degradation, and so on. So basically, if you if you have if you'll be using uh, your geosynthetics to an extreme environment, which when it comes to temperature, you need to make sure that the, the polymer that were used to manufacture the geosynthetics uh, will be able to um, handle the environment. Okay. The next is what we call oxidation. Okay. So uh, when it comes to oxidation, while all types of polymers react with oxygen causing degradation, um, it's the polyolefins, which are basically the polypropylenes and polyethylenes uh, that are generally considered to be the most susceptible to oxidation. So in terms of oxidation, you also need high temperature to make it happen. So uh, if there are cases where in um, extreme environment with uh, possible oxidation will occur, you need to double check the, the polymer type that, that you use for your geosynthetics. Next is the hydrolysis. Um, I like polyolefins. Polyolefins are good uh, against hydrolysis. The ones that are not good against hydrolysis uh, are the polyesters naman, okay? Or the polyethylene terephthalate. So hydrolysis can cause degradation by internal or external fibers or yarn reactions. However, geosynthetics are manufactured using polyester resins uh, and are particularly affected when uh, we immerse polyesters to a very high pH. And when you say hydrolysis, we're dealing here with pH. So uh, when you immerse it to a very high pH or very low pH, okay, so that they might be uh, uh, affected by hydrolysis. Then um, chemical degradation okay, or chemical factors. Um, there's an ASTM standard uh, number D540 that covers chemical degradation under the resistance of plastics to chemical reagents. Uh, in general, uh, um, our juice synthetics are able to handle various chemicals. So, uh, however, if you want to really ensure, especially if you're handling special chemicals, uh, in your project sites, you, you need to uh, ensure that the geosynthetics will not be affected. Okay. Also, biological. Okay, biological degradation. Um, there are cases where, in um, some studies, would say micro can uh, sometimes microorganisms can affect the degradation of uh, polymers. However. Uh, as we all know, geosynthetics are made, although geosynthetics are made from polymers or manufactured from polymers, um, the idea is the organisms must attach themselves to the fiber or yarn surfaces and use the polymer as a feedstock before they can be uh, uh, affected. But uh, in geosynthetics, it's highly unlikely okay, to happen. Uh, but there are cases where in the the, it's not just the polymers that you use to manufacture these synthetics. You need to add stabilizers, you need to add uh, plasticizers, antioxidants, and so on. And, and these additives um, to the polymer, however, might be vulnerable. Okay? So it's, it's not the polymer itself, but it's the additives that you, put, that you use together with polymers that might be subjected to biological degradation. Um, although there are standards that you can use also to verify if your geosynthetics can be affected or not. Okay? And last but not the least is the radioactive degradation. Okay? There's also... In some cases, uh, you need to consider this, especially if you're working on a very high level 
uh, radioactive waste. Okay, for example, if you're designing for spent nuclear fuel rods, okay, and if the proximity of geosynthetics okay, are, are is is uh, such that it would cost or generate radiation degradation, so you need to to factor that out to to ensure that your geosynthetics will last. Okay, I hope uh, I have given you some idea on the uh, aspect about the durability of our uh, geosynthetics. Okay, by the way, don't, don't, uh, I hope everyone can ask questions while I do the presentation as well. You can just type in your questions okay, and uh, make sure, um, uh, we'll make sure we can answer that after our presentation. In addition to the uh, lifespan of geosynthetics, um, the most of the geosynthetics nowadays have been um, tested since six years ago. So uh, there there are a lot of studies about the the uh, the lifespan of geosynthetics, and it can be said that uh, geosynthetics have been used for about sixty years, and um, in general, they have been proven durable. Okay, in other um, countries uh, like in Europe, they they have particular uh, definition when it comes to the design life of materials that they want to use for their project. For example, you have here the in table. You have the if you're going to use your use synthetics as a separator. Okay, you want to separate two distinct uh, materials. I'll discuss more of that in the next chapter. You can see here that this design life can be uh, from half a year to one year or up to 100 years. Okay, so depending on the application of the geosynthetics you have here for, fil for filtration, for reinforcement, uh, for drainage, okay, uh, for containment. So you have different, uh, different lives. Uh, design for a specific type of project. Okay? So um, hopefully we can uh, we can consider that also in our design. And uh, the last part of our introduction is to give you an idea on what references you can use when it comes to the design of our uh, structures with geosynthetics. I'm, I, uh, we always use this uh, manual from FHWA, the first one, this uh, Geosynthetic Design and Construction Guidelines is a very nice reference and it's free. You can download this, I have provided the link here below, you can download this and um, it's, it's, uh, it's a very nice reference. Another one is uh, this one by uh, uh, the late uh, uh, Dr. Corner, Bobby Corner, uh, Designing with Geosynthetics. So also um, a very nice reference when you want to design geosynthetics uh, according to different functions. In British standards, they have their own um, reference called uh, BS8006 or the Code of Practice for Strengthened or Reinforced Soils in Other, other Fields. Uh, uh, it also discuss a lot of um, design considerations when you use geosynthetics. Uh, by the way, we, uh, if you're familiar with DPWH Blue Book, uh, since um, so familiar po kayo, we also have the specifications of geotextiles, textiles, particularly in our existing Blue Book. Um, and I think there uh, it's on and going for revision to add additional more and more materials that we can use for our government projects. AASTO also provide us standard specifications for geosynthetic uh, applications. So meron din po silang reference. You can uh, actually uh, this FHWA manual uh, includes AASTO reference. So you can check that on that manual. And uh, if you want to 
uh, become a member of an uh, international geosynthetic society. It's free, space, it's free for students. Uh, you can go to their website, uh, www.geosynthetic.society.org. So you can also join that. And um, they also publish a lot of uh, manuals and guidelines when it comes to geosynthetics. And uh, it can be informative when you design your project. And of course, you can also check our company's website, www.macafree.com slash ph4, um, different applications of juice and that. In general, we have here four reasons why do we need to use juice and ethics. And uh, number one, uh, in, the Philipp in my experience in the Philippines, it has been proven that juice and that this can really be economical. They can save a lot of um, materials as well as time. And uh, of course, it's equivalent to saving a lot of money. Also, um, geosynthetics, since I joined our company, um, I've, I've been exposed to a lot of um, suppliers as well of geosynthetics. And I can say geosynthetics, although uh, since these are polymer, all, all polymer geosynthetics are imported um, from different uh, factories all around Asia and from Europe and even America. Um, however, because of suppliers, geosynthetics now are becoming more and more available. Okay. And uh, geosynthetics can make impossible designs possible. Um, I have seen structures like uh, 30 meters high, uh, retaining wall that can be used uh, and it cannot be done if, without use and ethics. So uh, it can really, in, in some cases, there are challenging construction sites and uh, the only solution will be the use of use and ethics. So there are cases that it can make impossible designs possible. And last but not the least, the use of use and ethics because the materials can become environment friendly. Okay. okay. Now we go to our next chapter. We'll discuss the different types of uh, geosynthetics. Major types of geosynthetics. Anyone who can and, um, major types of geosynthetics. Now we're on chapter two. I hope everyone is okay. Um, can anyone guess how many? Types are there when it comes to the major types of geosynthetic. Can I see in the chat? So we we'll just want to make it more interactive. Can you just type it down? And yung una pong makahula ng tamang sagot, I can uh, give you a special prize. Okay, but I'll send it after our um, uh, ECQ. Okay. <laughs> wow, meron na ang daming sagot. Okay, I can see a lot of answers. Well, uh, to give you a clue, it's less than 10, okay? I, but I think there's a winner already. Ayan, ang daming sagot. Wow. Ayan, and uh, the winner for our first question, and -na -na. <laughs> it's not other than si Sir. Leo Roland, okay, so I'll, I'll take it down muna, ha? Sir Leo Roland, okay, so sir, uh, let me know, okay, uh, your contact details later on, uh, uh, you just won a special prize from me, okay. So there are actually uh, eight major types of geosynthetics, okay. Um, first off is the geotextile, geogrid, geocomposite, Geosynthetic clay liner, geofoam, geonet, geomembrane, and few others. Okay. 
we'll discuss them one by one. So, para lang medyo review, review po ito kasi um, uh, I'm, I'm sure some of you may, may have just, um, it's your first time to deal with geosynthetic. So, I'll, I'll I just, that's why I put this as part of our topic for today. So, Sir Leo Rolana, you have my, <laughs> you have a price later. Um, okay, first up is the geotextile. So for the geotextile, po, it's anything that looks like a textile. As you can see there, we have three types, woven, non-woven, and knitted. Okay? So any geosynthetics that looks like a textile, we call it geotextile. And uh, basically, we have, uh, I don't know if you can see it clearly, um, but I can also show it. I have some samples with me here. Okay, pag uh, non-woven, these are, yung parang yung hilat sa niya po ay hindi masyadong uh, organized. The, the fibers are random. So we call this, um, okay, um, we call this non-woven geotextile. Woven geotextiles, pag makita po natin, maayos yung pagkakahilat niya, nung fibers niya. So these are uh, what we call woven geotextile. Okay. And uh, what else? So just show it, just to show you. Meron din po yung parang sako. We call it uh, woven. It's also woven kasi arranged, ma arranged naman na maayos yung, yung filaments niya. But we call it slit film woven uh, type. Okay. And another type is what we call knitted. Okay. Knitted po para sa may additional tahe. Uh, I can show you. I'm showing it to you in my screen right now. So para siya, if you can see in a closer look, may additional na tahe na nakahiwalay. So we call that knitted. So all of these are geotextiles. Okay. Then next is geogrid. Okay. Geogrid is uh, from the term itself, may grid siya, may, uh, may mesh type. Okay. May, mayroon, uh, it's commonly uh, known for its apertures or openings. Yung makikita niyo mga butas. Okay, apertures and nodes. Ito naman yung nodes, okay, yung junctures ng mga tensile elements natin. Okay, so also these nodes. And uh, based on how the nodes uh, are formed, dun, siya, dun, dun, dun ang galing yung mga types ng geogrid. Like you have woven geogrid, extruded geogrids, banded geogrids, and knitted geogrids. Okay. And uh, alam niyo po ba na in, in when geogrid was invented, it's actually designed for reinforcement. Okay? I'll discuss more of that later when uh, we come to chapter 3. But geogrid at, uh, is primarily designed to reinforce our soil. Okay. Ayan. So uh, this is how the woven geogrids uh, look like. And knitted geogrids. Ganun din sa knitted. Pag sabing knitted po kasi parang may additional na tahe na nakaiwalay. So makikita nyo po yan. Then uh, banded. Okay. Halatang halata para lang siyang ano, uh, prenes. Okay. Uh, thermal press and pressure. Yan. Tapos uh, nabant na yung uh, tensile elements natin. And uh, extruded. Okay. So these are all geogrids. So uh, kilala po yung mga geogrids na may opening or mesh opening na more than um, uh, to say one fourth of an inch. Okay? Hindi po dapat mas maliit doon. Basically, malalaki po yung opening. As you can see in my screen now, uh, although maliit lang yung uh, screen ko but uh, yung yung video but uh, as you can see medyo may kalakihan po when it comes to the opening size ng mga grids natin and the uh, yeah next po yung geo composite when say geo composite this is a these are geo synthetics um uh, that is composed of two or more materials okay? for example if you want to combine um 
two different beautech styles like um, woven beautextile and knitted beautextile together you can form a gel composite okay so at least one of them is a gel synthetic so uh, we call it gel composite however in the applications of uh, gel synthetics um, karamihan po ng gel composite are being used for drainage okay uh, ginagamit po natin siya for drainage so later on i'll show you more examples but again Pag uh, sinabing geocomposite, it's a combination of one or more type of geosynthetics. Okay. Then we also have geosynthetic clay liner. When we say geosynthetic clay liner, these are manufactured uh, material consisting of clay bonded to a layer or layers of geosynthetic materials. So meron ka pong normally meron kang uh, two layers of the geotextile tapos sa gitna ang may palaman tayo or uh, we have we put um, in between the geotextile a clay ma clay material and uh, we use it uh, for specific function okay and uh, i'll discuss it later ito para sa anya yung clay mineral na yon but anyone who knows uh, para saan yung Clay mineral na yun. Meron bang magpo-comment? You have another special price from me. Yan. For filter, sabi ni Sir Faustino, uh, for slope protection, waterproofing. That's a good comment from Sir Kimar Sainudin. So, tama po, si Sir Kimar Sainudin. It's actually used for waterproofing. Sir Kimar Sainudin. Sir Kimar Sainudin. Ayan. So, another winner from us. So, it's basically, actually, gamit po yun. Yung clay na yun, pang nabasa kasi siya ng tubig, nag-expand. So, highly expansive, highly swelling clay. And, and basically, it's called bentonite. And um, ang pinagawa niya, pag nag-expand, sinisil ang geotextiles at waterproof. Okay? So, ayan. Congratulations si Sir Kimar. I'll, I'll take note of your name first so para later on you can pop up. Then, um, another interesting major type of geosynthetics is geofoam. Okay? Ang geofoam po is uh, basically made from styro. Okay. So yun po yung material na ginagamit sa pagmanufacture niya. So polystyrene and uh bloke bloke siya. Malalaki yung sizes. And um kagandahan nito, sobrang gaan. Sobrang gaan ng geofoam and you can use it as a lightweight film material. Okay? So uh, here you can see here on the right uh, this is the geofoam blocks and um this is yung what we call spikes. Okay? Metal spikes. Ginagamit po yan kasi para kang uh, nagahalo blocks, di ba? Pero wala ka namang semento in between. So, nil nilalagyan po natin ng spikes para hindi po gumalaw yung mga bloke ng geofoam natin. Okay? So, geofoam is a block or planar rigid cellular foam polymeric material that we use in our uh, civil engineering projects. Then, uh, next up po is GeoNet is another major type of geosynthetics. And, kasi nyo po, meron din siyang opening like the GeoGrid. However, GeoNet actually have smaller, uh, relatively smaller uh, openings than the GeoGrid. Okay? So, mas, mas pino. Okay? Mas pino po yung opening sizes ng, ng geonets natin. And uh, geonets is a geosynthetic with integrally connected parallel sets of ribs in different angles. So we have three types as well. Okay. Uh, biplanar, triplanar, and tri tri um, triaxial. Okay. So yan po yung klase ng geonet natin. And uh, basically, ang geonet po natin, Ginagamit actually siyang 
uh, we can also term it as a geo spacer. Okay, in your term, uh, and right here, geo spacer. Why? Because uh, from the term itself, spacer, because po ginagamit siya na pang space uh, ng geotextile para po sa drainage application. Ginagamit kasi siya para sa pipe pero panel type. So this, this geo, uh, geonet cannot be easily compressed. Mas taas po yung compressive uh, resistance niya. And so it assures you that this dimension will be maintained all throughout the lifespan of your structure. So ganun po katigas yung mga geonet natin. However, uh, in, in its application, um, lagi pong may kasama ng geotextile yung geonet. Okay? Uh, so nilalagyan po natin ng geotextile. So again, when you combine one, uh, if you combine geonet with a geotextile, we call it geocomposite. Okay? So combination, pag combination ng types ng geosynthetics, we call it geocomposite. So ganun po siya. Uh, para hindi po pasukan ng soil, yung mga voids niyan, laging may filter cloth or geotextile. Then, uh, we also have um, geomembrane. Okay? Ang geomembrane, sikat po to sa other term. Ang tawag po nila ay HDPE liner. So, but in the geosynthetics world, you call it geomembrane. And it's basically, essentially impermeable geosynthetic composed of one or more synthetic layers. Ang, uh, ang geomembrane po ay uh, ginagamit natin uh, as a, for a specific function similar to a geosynthetic clay liner. So for waterproofing din. Okay? So marami din siyang itsura. Marami, ngayon may iba't ibang kulay na din po depending on the applications. Okay? Like for example, uh, Sa civil engineering projects, karamihan tayo makakita niyan kulay black. Okay? Sa mga aquaculture, ginagamit din yan. May mga kulay white okay? na, na ginagamit sila na geomembrane. So, later on, I'll, I'll discuss more of the, func the functions of geomembrane. And uh, last but not the least to our major type of geosynthetics, yung tinatawag po nating geo-others. Um, so, geo-others po, Meron po tayong tinatawag na geoblanket, geocell, geoweb, uh, geopipe. Okay? We also have geotextile tube or geotextile bulbs. We also have geostrip, um, geomattress. So this, uh, hindi man po sila isa-isa uh, 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 na na-consider as parang um, is, uh, distinct major type ng geosynthetics but the uh, Collectively, they perform specific function. Okay, meron po silang kanya-kanyang uh, uh, gamit when it comes to uh, their uh, uh, form. Okay? So later on, I'll give you some examples. So yung coconut fibers po, in other countries like in India, they, they can sometimes they consider it as a geonet. But uh, in our, in some of, uh, in Many references that I've I've been using, they they, they call it geo blanket. Okay, yung uh, if you're familiar po dun sa coconut natin, so we call it uh, geo blanket. Okay, so yan. So pag uh, for example yung geo textile, ginawa mo na siyang parang sako, it uh, it will become a geo other or we call it geo textile bud. Yung kung ito pa makikita nyo sa lower uh, screen natin, yung uh, malaking bag na to. This is, ang diameter po niyan or yung lapad niyan from 2 meters to up to 5 meters. We call it geotextile tube. And uh, it's, it has been used uh, nowadays uh, sa mga coastal projects po ng DPWH. So yan. So... Made of geotextile din po yan, pero uh, they perform specific function. So we're done with our um, major types of geosynthetics. Now we go to the core of our presentation, yung mga functions and design considerations. And um, I 
again, um, I have listed here uh, yung experience ko po sa paggamit ng G-Synthetics. Um, I was able to list um, um, the major functions of G-Synthetics uh, at uh, yung iba na dinagdag ko po sa ibang book, konti lang, pero dito uh, mas marami po yung discuss ko sa inyo ngayon. Um, papahulaan ko din po ulit, sino po dito yung makakapagsabi ng mga posibleng functions. Actually, nabanggit ko na po kanina yung ibe. Can you uh, give me some functions of uh, geosynthetics? Uh, siguro yung iba dito, ano po, mabiyasa na sa paggamit ng geosynthetics. Ayan. Uh, uh, sige, ang dami. Sige, I think, ayan, may nagsabi, waterproofing. Uh, uh, there's another term for waterproofing. Okay, okay, but I can use that. Sir Alfred Anulacion. Okay. Replacement for retaining wall. What do you mean, sir? Replacement of retaining wall. Uh, what else? As uh, water, water, uh, what's this? Drainage, reinforcement. Oh, yun. Uh, Soil reinforcement, si Jan, Sir Jan Renan Kapua. Jan Renan Kapua. Yes. Um, I'm sorry po. Pasensya na po sa mga na, nasa Facebook Live. Hindi ko po masyadong makita. Sayang po. Uh, but uh, officially yung pong mga nasa webinar, yung nasa Zoom webinar po yung nakikita ko po ng response. But uh, anyway, um, Yan po. Uh, don't worry, we'll, we'll cater to your uh, questions later on. Soil stabilization, soil reinforcement. Uh, grabe, mga bihasa na po pala dito <laughs> yung mga audience natin sa mga functions ng geosynthetics. Um, drainage by Sir Rufino Dangat. Si Sir Rufino Dangat. Yan. I hope I'm uh, uh, may, may time pa naman tayo po. So don't worry. Uh, soil stability, slow protection. Slow protection, yes. Okay. Uh, si Sir Sal Sel Sala. Si Ma'am Sel Sala. Si Ma'am Sel Sa Sala. Ma'am Sel Sa Sala. Salazar or what? Hindi buo yung... What else? To prevent contamination. Mm, yes, yes. Tama po. To prevent contamination. Filtration as per Sir Frederick. Uh, Sir Frederick Librero. Frederick Librero. Okay. Um, At else, insulation caution, Sir Luisito Carlos. Yan, yan. Sir, yan, tama. Um, what else? Uh, I'm looking for keywords po kasi I have uh, uh, listed para eight uh, keywords to define the the functions of geosynthetics. Anyway, so I'll, I'll give you the answer now. So I, I think I have... Uh, uh, I've listed down some names ng mga possible winners po uli natin. Uh, so major functions po. Okay, we have their barrier or containment. Ito po yung sa waterproofing na function. Okay? Then next, yung filtration, drainage, erosion control. So erosion control is the simpler term for slope protection. Okay? Then uh, protection, uh, do not be confused with slope protection. Protection is another uh, term. I'll define it later on. Okay? Reinforcement, of course, separation, the basic okay, function, separation. And last but not the least po, soil replacement. Okay? Oh, may nag-comment kanina uh, may, uh, yung sa retaining wall. May, may parang may nabanggit kanina. Okay. So, isa-isahin po natin i-define yung function na to. When say barrier po, when say barrier, um, the geosynthetics acts 
uh, as a relatively impermeable layer to liquids and or gases. So as you can see here, the red indicates uh, fluid, which means liquid or gases. And you have here the blue line, solid line, to represent um, uh, unabated okay, layer, impermeable layer. So this is a geosynthetic material. So ang, ang ginagawa niya po, hindi niya hinahayaan na lumusot. Hindi lumulusot dito yung, yung liquids or gases. So kinukontain niya lang. That's why we call it barrier. And uh, what geosynthetics can be used for this function? Uh, uh, the top three geosynthetics that you can use for this uh, specific function barrier is uh, these are geomembranes, geosynthetic clay liners, and geotextiles. Uh, take note, geotextiles, may opening po yun, kailangan may, uh, may ilagay ka na something. Normally, they spray it with uh, uh, foam para maging uh, uh, impermeable. So it should be impregnated with a certain uh, material to make it qualify as a candidate for a barrier application. Okay? Now we go to the design considerations. Ano po ba yung kailangan natin is lang when it comes to the use of uh, uh, of this function. Okay. So for barrier, number one po yung performance. Okay. You need to consider the performance of your uh, geosynthetic materials. When we talk about performance, it uh, discusses about the um, Kung primary or secondary lining ba siya, or uh, secondary or primary layer sa ating structure. Uh, kung ito po ba ay kailangan ng, uh, kailangan po ba natin lagyan ng additional support like drainage. Um, how yung leak, kailangan po bang i-double check against leakage or how, uh, uh, what, what are the considerations when it comes to leakage. And kung temporary or permanent po ba yung paggagamitan nung uh, material natin. So that's what we call performance. Okay? So when it comes to uh, durability naman, um, this is about yung na-discuss po natin, yung, that, that, that directly dictates yung lifespan ng polymer or ng geosynthetic materials natin. Like um, kung gagamitin mo ba yung material for fuel contain, uh, containment or other waste containment applications, kung uh, extreme ba yung temperature about and also yung exposure sa, uh, sa UV ng materials natin. So th those are the ones that you need to factor in when, when you talk about uh, yung sa durability ng geosynthetics. And that's one of the major uh, considerations when it comes to the design. Okay, then third on the list is yung in-service and installation conditions. Okay, pag sinabi po natin in-service, kung kung pag ginamit siya, ano yung saan siya may expose? Okay, may expose ba siya sa iba't ibang klase ng weather, like uh, uh, May malamig ba na environment uh, for a one month or mas tagal yung malamig na environment versus mainit na environment. So temperature variations also very, very significant when it comes to in-service conditions. Uh, about yung paiba-iba po ba yung uh, water level na paglalagyan. For example, we're talking about barrier po, uh, yung, yung containment. For example, sa uh, isang... Uh, um, containment ng tubig. Okay? Like parang fish pond. Okay? Pero ginagamit natin, for example, sa mga dam projects. Hydraulic, uh, hydropower projects. To contain yung water. So, napaka-importante po malaman natin kung uh, may epekto ba yung pag-iba-iba ng uh, fluctuation ng water level dun sa reservoir natin that could affect the polymer performance during installation and uh, during its life uh, service. And meron bang matatrap na gas sa ilalim? Kasi uh, there are applications, and I, I, I'm not sure kung na-experience mo po. Uh, sa ibang projects po, may tinatawag silang whaling. Whaling is the the floating of geomembrane. 
pag umangat po yung dew membrane, sometimes because of leakage ng water, underground water, pag hindi mo na address yung, uh, yung underground water or even gas. Okay? So ang gagawin niya, ipupush niya po yung dew membrane mo, aangat po yung na parang may whale dun sa reservoir natin. Okay? So nangyari na po yun. So we need to check that uh, because that's part of the design uh, and we need we need to avoid that. Kailangan walang matrap na, na gas sa ilalim ng, ng uh, material natin to ensure it's uh, uh, design uh, will be satisfied. Okay? What else? Um, there are cases that uh, like some specific uh, applications na uh, if you're designing for a very big um, waste containment facility, you, you may need to re request a peer review uh, just to double check, okay? To double check your design because uh, we need to um, we need to eliminate the risk involved. Okay? So uh, it is it has been suggested that from time to time you we need to have the consultants check our design to ensure na may eliminate po or ma-address po yung mga risk involved. And last but not the least, of course, in the Philippines, um, karamihan po nung paggamit natin, it's, uh, it's um, related to, uh, we want to make it uh, 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 economically uh, beneficial as well. So cost, okay? We need to check kung um, the cost uh, will will not be significantly uh, um, increased by the use of geosynthetics or also may, it may be helpful by decreasing the cost of your total project uh, cost or total project uh, total uh, budget of the project. So yung po. And uh, when it comes to survivability requirements, meron po tayong tinatawag na uh, uh, survivability Ibig sabihin yung, um, yung definition ng installation ng materials. Okay? It needs to survive a level of um, site condition. For example, we, create, we say low survivability requirement. Pag sinabi po uh, na low survivability, pag yung, yung geosynthetic natin nilagay natin sa isang maayos na subgrade or maayos na soil, so hindi siya masyadong ma-deform. Yun po, ibig sabihin mababa lang yung requirement mo when it comes to uh, the the parameters ng material. Next po yung medium survivability. This entails installation on subgrade with medium loads. For example, yung sa mga canal liners, okay, yung uh, lining ng mga uh, uh, hydraulic structures. And next, yung high survivability, when you install your materials on poor subgrade with high loads. Okay, so ang tendency po kasi noon, uh, posibleng mag, uh, uh, mag, mag fold yung geosynthetic material mo that could uh, initiate puncture, okay? Pang na fold because nag lose po yung subgrade, di ba? Kung malambot yung subgrade mo, so ang tendency yung yung geosynthetic material mo yung mati-carry ng load na yun. So, we need to uh, check kung that is your site condition. And last but not the least, very high survivability requirement. If you have very poor subgrade with extremely high loads, for example, sa mga reservoir covers or waste pans, or for example, when you're dealing with a very high important uh, civil engineering project, so you might need this uh, high survivability uh, requirement. And in addition to that, uh, we have here um, uh, yung iba't ibang thickness po nung um, geosynthetic material natin, specifically G-membrane, uh, for different survivability requirements. You have their 0.63 mm, 0.75 mm, 0.88 mm, and 1 mm. So these are the recommendations um, by... Um, one of our reference book. However, there are also uh, other uh, references that you can consult when it comes to uh, the use of geomembrane for your project. Okay? 
kasi minsan uh, these are based on uh, specific uh, load conditions eh. so you, you have to also consider that but it's not part of our presentation uh, unfortunately today so uh, now i'll give you some uh, applications for barrier na pwedeng uh, natin uh, check okay, for our projects number 1 yung control of expansive soil have you experienced that sometimes in, in when you're developing a subdivision for example and you encounter uh, highly expansive soil um, for road, di ba minsan, uh, yun, yun yung problema, yun yung problema talaga tayo eh. Yung, uh, kasi pag nabasa, tendency nun, mag-expand talaga and tendency, i-push nyo yung, yung uh, base forces natin. So, uh, para maiwasan po yung pag-infiltrate yung water dun sa expansive soil natin and ma-maintain ma lang kung ano yung moisture niya. Uh, we can put a geomembrane layer, okay? You can put a geomembrane or a barrier layer below, uh, on top of your expansive soil. In the, another application is in, in lining of panels. Pinagamit din po yan. And um, ang purpose po yan, again, yung sa tubig, to make sure na it will flow on a certain direction. Para hindi tumulo, waterproofing, okay? Na tinatawag. What else? Um, for water conveyance, okay, ito nga po yung sinasabi ko kanina, yung pag, if you want to uh, develop a um, wakeboarding park, okay, sa, sa Kamsur, ganun po ang ginawa nila. Nagukay lang sila sa bukid, tapos nilagyan nila ng lining, ng gym, nilininan nila ng gym membrane, then that's it. That's their uh, water park or uh, wakeboarding park na. So you can use it uh, to ensure na ma-contain mo po yung tubig. And, and for example, also sa mga land development projects like uh, Lakeshore uh, in Pampanga and uh, Novali. Novali is also uh, one of the nearest example in Metro Manila when uh, merong, uh, merong artificial lake. And uh, Yung Novali po is actually lined, the Novali Lake is actually lined with a geomembrane. Kaya hindi siya nahubusan basa-basa ng tubig. Okay. And the uh, underground fuel tanks. Okay, yan. Para make sure mo, pag may spillage man, makontain lang yung spillage. So, what else? Um, applications of barrier can be for retaining walls uh, on top of... Uh, uh, on the uppermost portion of retaining wall, you can put a gem membrane to minimize the infiltration of water that could generate uh, excess for water pressure to your wall. Um, so you can also put that there. And one of the classic application uh, um, of our uh, barrier uh, system is for slab on grade. Di po ba yung pang nag uh, boost tayo ng slab on grade? We put uh, moisture barrier or vapor barrier to ensure na ma, ma, ma cure natin ng maayos yung concrete natin. And, and that's actually a barrier function. Okay? Okay, it's, a, it's, it's part of the barrier function. Uh, and uh, to give you an idea, in the Philippines and in, in Ecological Solid Waste Management Act of 2000, yung sa operation of sanitary landfills. Sinabi po doon, uh, uh, ang required po doon, at least 1.5 millimeters na uh, HDPE liner yung dapat gamitin para po sa landfill, sa san pag-design po ng engineered sanitary landfill natin. Okay? Then sa ilalim po ng sanitary landfill, dapat meron pong makapal na clay material na at least 0.6 meter Okay. At uh, pwede din po tayong gumamit ng what we call geosynthetic clay liner. Kasi minsan sa ibang lugar, mahal po yung clay. So, you can use an alternative to that instead of yung makapal na um, makapal na uh, clay, you can use as, as at least 7 mm millimeters stick of a geosynthetic clay liner that will be an equivalent to your 0.6 meter. So just imagine po yung 0.6 meter na clay 
will be an equivalent niya is uh, just 0.6 meters, it will be equivalent to a 6.4 millimeters millimeters po na clay liner. Okay, ganun po yung yung uh, benefits po sa paggamit ng geosynthetics. Okay? The next function po na i-discuss po natin is filtration. Yan, marami po nag-share uh, kanina na yan, alam na alam po nila yung paggamit ng geosynthetics for filtration. So, ano po ba nangyayari when it comes to filtration? Ang nangyayari po dito, yung um, the geosynthetic material is allowing the water or air to pass through uh, but containing the solid particles on the other side. So, yun po yung, yun, that's the principle of our um, uh, geosynthetic materials for filtration. And what are the candidates for this? You can use geotextiles or geocomposites. Okay? So, geotextiles are very known for this uh, application, filtration application. If the smaller openings in geosynthetics are sufficiently large enough to allow smaller soil particles to pass through, there will be no clogging and binding. That's, uh, in, in the design of fil for filtration function, we need to make sure that we avoid this, what we call clogging and binding. So as, as we all know, all geotextiles are permeable. They, they have opening sizes. And um, we we need to make sure that it, the, the the openings will not clog or be blinded, okay? okay? By by the soil particles, and uh, there are uh, design considerations when you want to consider when we not we want to ensure that clogging will be avoided, and uh, that's part of the design considerations for filtration application. For filtration application, number one, we need to ensure that the soil will be retained on the other side. And uh, we have this uh, um, generic equation um, for the opening size, effective opening size of the geotextile or geosynthetic material, O95, or apparent opening size, AOS should be less than or equal to half up to three times the D85. D85 is the 85% uh, finer, the diameter of the 85% finer uh, during your sieve analysis. Okay, so you, my, there's, there's a lot of, uh, you know, criteria that you can use and this, this is one of them. Also, you need when you de you're designing for filtration, you need to double check the permeability as well as permittivity. Na tinatawag. Okay, when you say permeability, uh, everyone knows the per permeability, and you need to compare the permeability of your geosynthetic materials, which is K uh, sub GSY, should be greater than or equal to one to ten times the permeability of your soil to ensure that the uh, water will pass through, okay? And uh, since uh, we we're talking about the volumetric flow of water per unit area of geosynthetic, it is defined by a parameter called permittivity, okay? um, which is a symbol C. And um, per permittivity should be greater than or equal to 0.1 to 0.5 per second, okay? That's the common... Uh, range of permittivity values for geosynthetics. And basically, it's actually equal to the permeability of geosynthetics all over the thickness of your geosynthetic materials. And uh, when we talk about permeability of geosynthetic materials, um, it's the cross plane, okay? We talk about, we're talking about cross plane permeability. Ibig sabihin po, um, perpendicular to the uh, plane of your geosynthetic material. That's the cross plane permeability and of, uh, divided by the thickness of your geosynthetics, that's your permittivity value. Then to ensure clogging resistance, there's also a recommendation called, um, uh, should be um, AOS 095 should be greater than equal to 
3 times D15. Sorry, it should be here. Yeah. 3 times uh, D15. Uh, okay, to avoid po yung clogging natin sa geosynthetic materials. So, we want the the the, the geosynthetic materials to, to have opening to, to allow the water to pass through, but the opening should not be too big or too small. Too big such that the soil uh, will escape or too small such that there will be clogging. Okay? So, yun po yung mga kailangan natin i-consider when we design for filtration. And of course, survivability and endurance and cost. So, what are some applications for filtration? Common po na ginagamit natin yung filtration uh, material for like this, uh, under the drains. Uh, trench drains po yan na may pipe, tapos yung pipe po perforated pipe. Tapos binabalutan po natin ng geotextile. Yan. So, para po yung water lang ang pumasok dun sa pipe na perforated, then the the service life of the pipe will be, or the service design of the pipe will be ensured. So there are these are just different configurations. Sometimes you don't use pipes; it's just plain stones or gra uh, granular materials um, encapsulated by geotextile. Po, pwede po yun, like this. So babalutin mo lang yung granular materials, okay? And you can use it as alternative to your pipes. Um, for filtration, it can also be used um, in other countries. This is very popular. Uh, we call it edge drains in, in the, along the highways. Uh, on the sides, they put a vertical, they cut vertically like a trench 100 to 150 mm wide. And then they dig a trench um, and install this material. Okay. So, meron po yung collector pipe sa ilalim. Okay. There's a collector pipe below this that will collect all the water that goes into your subgrade to ensure that the uh, design life for your pavement um, will be met. Considering you have a high water table or your, your highway is near, um, um, a fish pond or something. So to avoid oversaturation of subgrade, you can put edge drains. And the uh, geotextiles combined with a, a geopipe can be used for that application. What else? Uh, walls with with holes. Also, yeah. So normally you can put geosynthetics at the back of your wall, and Basically, that's to separate the sand layer to your soil, okay, or clay layer to ensure that the, the sand will act as a drain, okay, water drain behind your retaining wall. Okay, so that's it for filtration. Next function is um, for drainage. Drainage acts as a drain to carry fluid flows um, horizontally or vertically through less permeable soils. So when it talks about drainage, yung geosynthetic po mismo, yung magiging drain, it will carry the water along its plane. Okay? So unlike filtration, the, the, the flow, flow of water is perpendicular to its plane. In drainage, the flow of water is parallel to its plane. So what geosynthetics can be used? You can use geocomposite, geonet, and for geotextile. And of course, geotextile can also be used for thick geotextile. What are the design considerations for drainage applications? Of course, you can, uh, since it's a drainage, you need to also allow water to pass into the core of a material. You have to have a filter material first. And uh, for that, you need a filtration criteria that we have discussed earlier. Um, and here, what we're talking about is uh, another property of a geosynthetic material called um, transmissivity. Okay? Transmissivity is the, 
flow of water within the plane of the geosynthetic materials. So you need to consider the transmissivity of your geosynthetics as well as the flow capacity okay? because we're talking about the volume of water that goes into your geosynthetic materials. Um, considering, uh, of course, the flow capacity might, might be reduced under compression, under loads, if you're dealing with a horizontal drainage application, or of course, uh, there are also effects of creep or the prolonged load to your geosynthetics. The capacity or the dimension of geosynthetics might be reduced over time. So those are the considerations that we need to uh, put in mind. So transmissivity, again, is defined as the permeability uh, geosynthetics, the permeability of in-plane permeability of their geosynthetics times the thickness of your geosynthetic materials. So uh, that's the definition of transmissivity. It is the parameter that you need to double check when you're designing for this function, for drainage function. There are uh, recommendations when it comes to the use of um, materials like geotextiles for drainage applications by ASTO. Um, it provides you a set of parameters like grub strength, seam strength, tear strength, contour strength, burst strength that you can use to um, qualify your geotextiles for this application. Okay, uh, um, These are listed in the ASTO M288 guidelines. Interestingly, when it comes to this uh, application, you have here a uh, geocomposite material. You have two layers of using that geotextile. Okay, one and two. Then they are sandwiching a core. So this is the core. So the core maintains the, the, the capacity designed for your geocomposite. Okay, for example, if your uh, geocomposite is designed for uh, 10 liters per meter width material, so the drainage core can be varied, the thickness of the drainage core can be varied to allow uh, increase or decrease of the volume of water that can be accommodated, okay? And by the way, GUNET is very famous for, for this as a replacement. You can use GUNET. Okay? You can use GUNET um, as alternative to the drainage core because then the GUNET is very stiff. Hindi po siya basta basta na compress. So you maintain the, the design thickness and the design volume for your geocomposite material. Um, at the end of your geocomposite material, you have a geopipe. Okay? You connect the geopipe because the geopipe will collect the water that comes from your geocomposite. Okay? So this is an example on how you uh, combine a geocomposite drainage material to your geopipe. Okay? The next, um, this is a specific type of uh, geocomposite called uh, prefabricated vertical drain. It's been used for uh, soil consolidation applications. Uh, it's actually composed of a geotextile jacket. And in, in, um, inside is a drainage core. The drainage core, again, is a spacer that maintains the, the thickness or the width of your PVD, in short. And uh, what th does PVDs do? It's very important specifically for soil consolidation or the process of extracting extra water from your soil. Okay? It, it can use to expedite the settlement. It can reduce time for your consolidation process. And basically, it can limit or avoid the post-construction settlements. So I have here another uh, uh, um, diagram on how the PVDs um, play their role. On the left side, you have there without the PVDs. As you can see, uh, when, you, when you're dealing with soil consolidation, the idea is to extract the water flow from your clay material. So you want, uh, um, you want to increase 
the drainage path, okay? The drainage path of your uh, water so that it can escape once the water is extracted from your uh, from the voids of your soil, then it will reach a certain uh, consolidation that will allow your uh, soil to carry higher loads. Okay, so so the DVDs allow the shortening of drainage path. At, uh, additional applications for drainage you have here you can put it um, as a chim uh, behind the chimney drain or um, for uh, your uh, embankment or earth dam okay also for uh, at the base of your embankment if you're dealing with uh, saturated compressible fine grain foundation soil where the groundwater is, is very high and could uh, change from time to time so you want to address that by putting a layer below your uh, embankment, okay? Layer, uh, a, a drainage layer. You can use a drainage decomposite to address that. You can also use drainage decomposite behind your reinforced soil walls, okay? And you, you can see here there's a pipe that's connect your decomposite drain um, to your geocomposite. And of course, in tunneling applications as well, you can use geocomposite drain materials. Um, erosion control. Next is erosion control. When you say erosion control, this is used basically uh, as commented kanina, in slow protection. Um, the use synthetics act to reduce soil erosion caused by rain, rainfall impact, surface water runoff, and effects of water flows. And uh, what geosynthetics can be used? You can use geoblankets, geotextiles, and geocomposites for this application. Um, and um, actually, there are a lot of um, erosion control um, applications. Like if you can, you can use it beneath rock armor, or say uh, below your rock armor, so that your soil will not be washed away when you're dealing with um, our revetment protection. Uh, again, you have to have a filtration criteria and the impact strength. Impact strength is that uh, such that your geotextile will not be easily um, affected by the dropping of your boulders. Okay. And of course, you have to check the economy of your design. And uh, when it comes to the use of um, Erosion control geotextiles. Aasto provides also guidance on that. They give you range of properties, grab strength, tear strength, puncture strength, burst strength, and so on when it comes to the selection of geotextiles that you can use. Take note here for erosion control, uh, woven slit film or yung parang sako, yung tape geotextiles are not allowed uh, uh, for. Uh, some, some of the applications of erosion uh, control. Okay, for additional applications for erosion control, so beneath the car more, you can see here for below cover stone of ditch, um, scar protection of abutments, um, else below riprap or um, revet mattress can also be used. And um, in addition to um, use of um, geotextiles for uh, below rock armor, you can use also the geotextiles for silt fence applications. Uh, it's also used to control erosion. Uh, what, what's, what's silt fence? It's basically just a fence and you put uh, instead of um, um, instead of um, hollow blocks or something, you use geotextile for the fabric as your fencing material. Okay, uh, here the important consideration should be the geometry of your slope, which is the, the length of your slope. Where will you put your use and that takes the angle of the slope, retention criteria, the volume of water or, or, or the sediments that needs to be contained. 
the spacing um, of your uh, post and the height of your post. Of course, uh, it should uh, the geotech geosynthetic should have enough strength that can uh, withstand the impacts of your um, sediments, run, uh, sediments and your runoff. So for a typical section of um, silt fence, you have here on your uh, on the right part of your of the slide the typical details, and um, you have you also um, guidelines of ASTO when it comes to choosing the spacing of the post and the strength properties of your geosynthetic materials, the permittivity, as you can see here. It's also um, noted, okay, and the apparent opening size of your geosynthetics should uh, follow these requirements mentioned in this thing, okay. Um, also, for erosion control, uh, one of the common applications will be for surface protection, wherein the geosynthetic itself is the one you use to blanket your, um, your soil. And uh, for that application, you need to also consider the geometry uh, of your slope and the soil properties involved. Global stability check. Uh, what, what do you mean by global stability check? Uh, basically, it's the slope stability check that you perform to verify if indeed the slope is stable against mass wasting or the mass movement. Because here, when we're talking about uh, surface protect protection, we're only talking about erosion. So we, we don't want that uh, um, the slope is also unstable globally. So that's what I mean. So when, when um, there are checks that you perform, uh, like here, you, um, you model the slope in software, then you check the global stability, and it should uh, have a safety factor of uh, greater than or equal to 1.5, at least for static conditions, or at least 1.1 for seismic conditions. And uh, not, not just that, you need to check if the material will be able to handle at, uh, hydraulic uh, parameters or um, stresses like shear stress and velocity um, um, on the surface. Okay. So for in order to do that, you can use the, this diagram. This is a simple diagram to determine the susceptibility of your um, soil against erosion. Okay, Especially, specifically um, if you're dealing with slopes that are adjacent to a body of water, like this one, you can see here sand. Sand can be eroded with, um, for example, sand with one millimeter uh, diameter can be easily eroded if you have here a low velocity greater than maybe 20 centimeters per second. That's what it means by this graph. And it can uh, maintain uh, in its place if the velocity is um, only less than 10. Okay. Take note that um, sandy materials are, are the ones vulnerable uh, against erosion, specifically when uh, we have to factor in the uh, water velocity in dealing, uh, in dealing with hydraulic structures. And uh, um, this, this is a very important um, graph when it comes to the use of um, materials erosion control materials. Some materials can be uh, categorized based on their design velocity. So like this one, um, you have here fully vegetated uh, turf reinforcement material can be used to, um, uh, uh, can be stable for velocities up to five to six meters per second. For non-vegetated materials can be up from 2.5 to 6 meters per second. Okay, um, right. And uh, last but not least, by the way, we have also, I'd like to promote our made, uh, our coconut products, the Made in the Philippines uh, product developed by Dr. Arboleda. 
the, the it's so called Toponet. It's also a geo blanket. It's very famous in in DPWS projects. However, it has all also its um, limitations. However, you can design it accordingly. It's very cheap, and uh, uh, it can you can, you can support our local um, uh, industry. Okay. So Coconet uh, being used for uh, erosion control. Then uh, another function. I hope you're okay. I hope everyone's okay. Um, and another function is the prote protection. The geosynthetics acts as a caution layer to protect puncture of underlying geosynthetics, okay, by reducing the po point contact stresses in between uh, the geosynthetic materials. So what are the candidates for this? You can use geotextiles, thick geotextiles, and uh, geocomposites. So design considerations, you need to um, consider the impact strength uh, uh, such that it, uh, it will not be affected by dropping large boulders onto your geosynthetic materials. Of course, uh, the strength of the materials is relative to its thickness and the density. So you need to double check on that. The type of geosynthetics play, uh, play a role as well. And uh, the loads that you need to consider, maybe you, uh, to minimize the cost, you may want to limit the drop height of the boulders on top of your geosynthetic materials. Okay. Otherwise, you might you will need a very thick one, and of course the cost. So this is an example application wherein uh, a protection geotextile on top of a geotextile tube is placed so that the geotextile tube will not be punctured easily. Okay. Then um, an, another interesting function for um, this material for geosynthetic is. Reinforcement, okay. Rein in reinforcement, hindi lang po sa concrete yung reinforcement. We can also reinforce our soil by using geosynthetics. And uh, in the olden days, only steel are used for reinforcement of soils. But nowadays, with the advent of the polymer products, which are more durable, um, geosynthetics have been used. And uh, it acts as reinforcements within a soil mass to produce a composite that has to improve strength and deformation properties. What are the major candidates for this uh, function? You have here the geogrids, geotextiles, and the geocomposites. Um, in the use of uh, in this function, reinforcement for unpaved and paved roads, it's very important that you. Uh, consider the long-term tensile strength of the material. Long-term strength means you you factor in the creep, installation damage, as well as chemical and biological degradation of your materials. And uh, how do you do that? You compute the uh, the long-term strength by dividing your ultimate tensile strength of your geosynthetic materials by all of these reduction factors. Okay, and these reduction factors are available from your from the manufacturers of the geosynthetics. Of course, you have to consider the subgrade strength when you're deciding designing for roads, and the loads like vehicle passes and volume, and the SL, what we call the equivalent single axle loads that the pavement will be exposed to during its lifetime, and of course cost. And by the way, in the use of uh, geosynthetics for roads, it has been proven that um, uh, it can reduce up to 30% of granular fill okay, below your uh, roads. And um, this reduction is relative to reduction also in cost and time, of course. Another uh, um, specific function for reinforcement would be re for reinforced soil walls and slopes. For reinforced soil walls and slopes, you need to also consider the long-term tensile strength, the length and spacing of your reinforcements because we're talking about retaining walls, 
what you need to remind, uh, remind of is the length of your reinforcement, this one. Okay. The rule of thumb says that the length of your reinforcement should be 70% of the height of your structure. So that, that's the, the length. And the spacing, of course, the vertical spacing of the reinforcement, you need to uh, double check that as well. And design loads, uh, similar to the design of retaining wall, any retaining walls, you also consider the surcharge, earthquake, water, and even the um, topography where the structure will be built on. So you need to consider that. Okay. And soil parameters, of course, when you design any structures, it's important, as well as cost. Okay, uh, as you can see here, another diagram of your, uh, of your reinforcement placed horizontally layer after layer of your uh, backfill materials. Another uh, major applications of reinforcement function would be for what they call basal reinforcement. In uh, geotechnical engineering, is defined as the uh, placing. Uh, basal reinforcement refers to the uh, installation of a stiff layer of a material below your embankment for uh, specific functions. Okay, uh, it can be to increase the bearing capacity uh, and uh, to resist rotational failure and uh, basically to increase resistance against spreading, lateral spread, or also, and or also for overall failure, resist against overall failure. So those are the considerations that you need uh, uh, when you design the geosynthetics for this application, okay? So what are the common failure modes? As you can see there, you have the bearing capacity or foundation extrusion. Um, when you're dealing with soft clay foundation, okay, you put a reinforcement on top of your soft soil. Rotational failure, also lateral sliding or all failure. So these are the failure modes that you want your uh, embankments to be checked uh, when you uh, design for basal reinforcement. In typical section, you have here the configuration of your reinforcement. You have uh, your embankment, and below your embankment is your reinforcement anchored with a block on each side. Okay, you have there one, and you have two anchor anchors. Okay, to secure your reinforcement in its place. But what are the benefits of this uh, application? Basically it increases the safety factor against catastrophic failure. And it can uh, minimize the differential settlements. However, it will not uh, eliminate the overall settlements. Okay? It also, it will not limit because um, uh, in reality, if, if it's uh, a very soft soil, it will just, um, it will need additional um, improvement from other um, methods to make sure that it, it, the settlement will be addressed. But here you can control partially the differential settlement and you can increase the safety factor against cat catastrophic failure. Um, in other cases, they use columns, okay? like stone columns or piles to address the settlements. And uh, in, in, in that uh, aspect it can allow also uh, speed speedy construction of your embankment to its desired heights and um, it can control post-construction settlements so your geosynthetic reinforcement materials can be placed on top of those uh, columns there then um, second to the last function is the separation. Geosynthetics can be used for separation. Um, basically, the idea is to separate two distinct types of materials. 
and you can use geotextiles, geocomposites, and geofoam. Um, for considerations, you have the burst strength na tinatawag. You want your geotextile to resist any burst pressure coming from your under uh, the soil underneath it. You have to also uh, consider the puncture strength of any uh, rough materials below your geosynthetic materials. You also have to consider uh, the tensile strength okay, of your geosynthetic materials. So it's placed horizontally. The you have here the the granular materials positioned and interlock with your horizontally placed geosynthetic materials, and this. As you create the pressure on top of these aggregates, it, it, uh, it uh, pushes laterally your geosynthetic materials and creates a tensile force. So that, that tension should be able to be resisted by your geosynthetics. And last but not the least, yung, the impact strength. Uh, the the ge geosynthetics, when used as separator, should be able to handle any impact from your uh, boulders or stones on top of it. And of course, durability, you need to consider as always. And so what are the common applications for separation? It can be used behind retaining walls, subgrades, um, and under drains. And uh, last but not the least for uh, this application, uh, for functions of geosynthetics, um, we have the soil replacement. So geosynthetics can also be used for soil replacement, yes, um, because it can be used as a lightweight film materials. Uh, specifically, uh, ang ginagamit po natin yung geofoam, okay? As, as uh, can be depicted by this photo, um, the geofoam replaces the soil as your backfill material. Uh, why is it that uh, uh, geofoam is very popular. Well, because it's ultra lightweight in a sense that it's the unit weight of geofoam ranges from 0.1 to 0.5 kilonewton per cubic meter. Just imagine the the difference of uh, it from your typical soil backfill, which is normally around 16 kilonewton per cubic meter to 18 kilonewton per cubic meter. So geofoam is very very light. And it's good when it comes to uh, the um, when you're dealing with subsoil conditions. You don't want your subsoil to be stressed too much. Also, um, geofoam are known to have um, insulation uh, properties. Uh, also, it can uh, because you have a very lightweight material, it can reduce your settlement. You're dealing with uh, uh, settlement issues and uh, durability. Okay? You have, need to consider that also in your design as well as cost. However, you know, that's the only drawback for the geofoam. It's uh, relatively nowadays it's still uh, expensive compared to other materials. But it really suits its job when when you're you're dealing with specific products. And uh, you know uh, when you're uh, when you use Geofoam uh, for backfills behind walls uh, it can it basically um, assure you that only active lateral air pressure will be mobilized and it can tremendously uh, reduce your active air pressure by 35%. Um, okay, about 35%. So that ends our chapter. Three, now we're, we'll see some of the projects that we have uh, in, in the Philippines when we uh, deal about geosynthetics. I hope everyone's still there, okay? Um, so first off, we have there this one. Then this is uh, a project for erosion control. Um, the materials used this in, in this picture is a geo blanket um, called Mahmat R, and we uh, the slope here is uh, uh, has a slope of greater than forty five degrees. 
And uh, as you can see here, uh, the client requires the uh, planting of uh, manila grass below it. Another uh, project for erosion control is this one. Um, this is uh, with the use of uh, with the use of geometries okay, for erosion control. You can use this for when you're uh, dealing with um, high velocity uh, requirement up to six meters per second. This one um, is a very nice cut slope, and uh, the slope here is less than 45 degrees. We use coconut fibers or geo blanket to uh, control erosion for this project. And uh, take note of the the dissipatory canals that are used to address also surface water runoff, as well as the horizontal drains. Napaka importante po yun because in erosion control, your 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 main uh, uh, opponent is the water. So you, as much as possible, you want to cover it. And however, for uh, the use of uh, coconut coconut fibers, you need to ensure that once the coconut fibers degrade, the vegetation uh, will replace your coconut fibers, and the vegetation will serve as your permanent erosion control material. You can also uh, try to check if you can use hydroseeding. Hydroseeding is the, by the way, hydroseeding is the, the spraying of seeds with mulches and the fertilizers on top of your slope to, to basically to expedite the vegetation process. However, you need to maintain that and need to uh, spray water uh, daily to ensure that the seeds will grow. So that's, that's what it means by hydroceding. This is another project for erosion control. Um, and um, here, what you can see is a, a, a slope with a, a greater than uh, 45 degrees. And take note of the vertical uh, drains or dissipators and the horizontal canals to address surface water runoff. In this project uh, by DPWH Palawan, the hydro seeding was not required because in the project site, the, you meet, uh, the moisture is very high. So it is anticipated that water, uh, the vegetation will grow very fast. Okay? So without the need or uh, extra cost of hydro seeding. Another application of uh, erosion control products for um, our, a creek. Okay. You can see here, obviously, the slope angle is greater than 45 degrees, uh, specifically on this left side. And um, the grasses were planted below the, uh, the geosynthetic material to expedite vegetation process. We use carabao grass for, for this project to make it uh, more uh, aesthetically pleasing. Um, this is an interesting picture. It's not the Philippines, but uh, I just took this because it gives us an idea on um, uh, the combinations of using that takes in a project. The white material, this one, this number one, is actually a geotextile. And the, the purpose of that is for protecting the underlayer material, which is um, this uh, black one, a geomembrane, okay? A geomembrane material. So you have the backfill, you have a geotextile, then the geomembrane. Of course, uh, together with that, you have also a pipe uh, included in the system to address the drainage. Um, I'm sure I saw online this one from um, wherein they use also um, geomembrane to contain water for a wave arc. 
Okay. Um, so they came up with an idea of uh, building a resort um, along a, a, a rice field and they put HDP liner as a lining to contain the water. Okay. Of course, underneath the geomembrane, you have the geotextile as well as the geopipe. This one, another project for erosion control out there in Ambuklao. Um, the idea is to use grout mattress. It's a geo others. Um, they put grout inside a geotextile um, sort of a form like material. Uh, and um, once the concrete is hardened, it serves as your uh, permanent erosion control. This is a bigger view of the material, as you can see. This is this this looks this looks like uh, this look like uh, sausages, and these are actually geotextile materials with grout or concrete inside. And on top of that, the line the line, the slope of the dam with geomembrane uh no uh, gabions rather gabions and geotextile underneath okay, for erosion protection. Uh, drainage for this application, you have here a um, um, uh, water tank. And uh, you can see here the base of the uh, tank is lined with a geocomposite drainage material. Inside this, you have here pipe that uh, runs along the length of your tank. And uh, also, uh, this one is uh, an, another application of geomembrane for um, waste containment dam uh, for a mineral exploration facility. Um, it's used, uh, the geomembrane is used to line the slope okay, to ensure um, containment of your waste water. Another example of um, Containment application is this one, okay, um, using HTP EGM membrane. And this one is uh, a project in um, in Davao for a hydroelectric power plant okay, to contain the water for the reservoir. And this one is um, a uh, very uh, this is in UP Ayala Techno Hub, uh, and it's a water, rainwater collection pond. It's lined with geomembrane underneath, but also with geotextile for protection of the geomembrane and a geopipe for collection of water. This is an interesting application of uh, geofoam uh, for soil replacement, um, for raised flooring. Um, and uh, you use also geotextile on top of this uh, material to separate it from your um, uh, concrete slab. Okay, another geofoam applications you can see there uh, in your screen. Uh, you can use it as alternative to your backfill material. So it's like a Lego. You can just uh, install it one after the other. And it's very light in weight. Okay, another massive application of geofoam in Laguna. Okay, um, thanks to my colleague from uh, megapackaging.com.ph, um, he was able to provide me a, a classic example of um, geofoam being used in a uh, project in Laguna for uh, lightweight fill application. This one, another drainage application. Okay, uh, you put it behind your retaining wall to collect water, any infiltrating water behind your retaining wall. And there's a pipe that collects the water below this geosynthetic uh, um, drain. This is uh, an interesting material called geocell. Um, it's made from HDPE, and uh, you can use it also for reinforcement of your um, subgrade or road. This one in particular uh, is used um, for the construction of a runway in an island. 
you can take notice of the this the white one this is a geotextile you use it to separate the back the compacted materials inside your geo cell from your existing subgrades okay um we're almost we're very okay. and some more projects for erosion control um like this one you can use also geo cell for erosion control projects what else Actually, I have a lot of examples, but I think I don't have much of the time. I'm sorry, but uh, yeah, but uh, I can share. I think I can share the slides to all the participants. Yeah, and uh, I just want to show you this last slide. Okay, the last slide for the chapter four before I do the summary. Um, okay, um, this is an application for filtration. It's a silt fence. Um, and as you can see, this is not Photoshop. The photo uh, was taken uh, um, from a mineral exploration site um, on, along the shoreline. You can, the geotextile was placed as a temporary fence okay, to protect uh, or uh, prevent the spread of sediments along the shoreline. Okay? and uh, many examples for retaining wall of construction. And just to give you the summary, okay, now we're down to the summary of our presentation, chapter five. I hope you're still there. Uh, number one, uh, we, we know that uh, geosynthetics have different types. Okay? Uh, we have geotextiles, geogrids, geocomposites, geosynthetic clay liners. We have geofoams, geonets, uh, geomembranes, and geoaders. Uh, next, we, we, uh, we know that uh, geosynthetics can also be used according to different functions. Uh, we have their uh, barrier or containment, uh, drainage, erosion control, filtration, protection, uh, particularly uh, reinforcement, separation, and of course, soil replacement. Um, thirdly, uh, we know that um, uh, for design considerations, take note of the four P's na tinatawag, which is very timely to our uh, ECQ nowadays, yung four P's na tinatawag. Um, but here, when you say four P's, we are, uh, we're talking about the properties of geosynthetics. That's number one. You need to consider that because um, it dictates the, the uh, long-term strength of your materials. The performance of geosynthetics because... Um, uh, it's a factor of the considering your site conditions, okay, uh, may expose, uh, and it also dictates the lifespan of your geosynthetic materials. Your project requirements, okay, sometimes you are dealing with very specific uh, project requirements to, like, for example, to address um, soil settlements and so on. So you need to consider that in your design. And of course, PESO or cost savings. Uh, in the design of um, geosynthetic structures, uh, we always consider that. And last but not the least, um, geosynthetics are used uh, nowadays in various infrastructure projects, uh, specifically in the Philippines, because of their economical benefits. They are uh, available. There are lots of suppliers of geosynthetic materials, and uh, they are known to provide a lot of engineering benefits. and uh, they are known to provide the uh, environment uh, friendliness. And so that's all. Thank you very much. And that ends my presentation. If you want to, uh, to, to know more about Maca Ferry, for example, uh, uh, our services, when it comes to the geosynthetics, you can uh, look for our social media accounts. And uh, I'd, like, uh, I'd like to thank uh, the Philippine Institute of Civil Engineers uh, Dr. Zarco, Sir Eric Sison, uh, uh, Sir Rene, um, for, for this invitation and for this uh, opportunity to discuss to you anything that we can share about geosynthetics for our uh, civil engineers. So that ends my presentation. I hope everyone is still safe. And um, I think we're on for our questions and answers. Over to you, Dr. Zarco. Okay, um, I'll ask 
Eric. Um, do we go first to the announcements or do we go to the question and answer? Q&A po muna, Doc Z. Okay, lang. sige. So um, I just summarized some of the questions. So those of you, uh, I lumped them up together. First of all, Adrian, where can you can no. get um, information regarding the specifications for these, for each of the uh, different types of G-synthetics. Uh, does uh, Macaferry publish online the uh, technical data sheets? Ah, oh, interesting. Yes, um, for the technical specifications of materials, uh, um, we, we, put, we put it in our uh, websites. You okay. can just uh, register on our website and uh, we can send you an email about the specifications. Okay. Um, yeah. One of the most common questions is, are there any harmful effects of geosynthetics when, uh, to the environment or to humans? Do they, do they leach out harmful uh, byproducts? Ah, interesting. Um, since these are uh, plastics, normally they do not emit any um, harmful chemicals. Um, it's, it's more of um, uh, you need to, uh, you need to uh, double check it in your design as, a, as a, a priori, you need to double check if you are dealing with uh, a harmful substance that could easily degrade your materials, that's the only problem. But uh, when it comes to degradation and uh, uh, polluting the environment, it's more of the ones that being contained by these materials. Uh, that are harmful, okay, not the okay. themselves. No. Okay. Um, are there design standards? And uh, where can uh, people get uh, copies of these design standards? Uh, for the design standards, um, you, I, I just want to show you the slides that I shared earlier. Uh, in the Philippines, normally we use American standards in general in our civil engineering designs. And that's why I have listed here in, um, in our, yeah, there. Um, uh, I have listed here some of our references that you can use when uh, dealing with the design of geosynthetic structures. Yeah, you can use um, uh, for most the FHWA, FHWA manual. Uh, it can give you a very nice reference for the design. And of course, this one is um, uh, also sort of a, a Bible for geosynthetics, the, the designing with geosynthetics by Sir Corner. Okay, and um, one of the most co uh, common questions several people ask, can this be used to prevent uh, uh, non-structural concrete from cracking during the curing period of the concrete? Ah, so maybe you're, uh, you're, you're dealing with, well, well again, um, when we talk about geosynthetics, you use it together with soil. Mm -hmm. So there are cases, special cases like uh, geomembrane. They use it for lining of uh, concrete tanks, but it's not that are not in contact or directly with soil, but for a specific function. Um, it, if you're trying to avoid cracks because possibly the one being contained or the one being exposed to of that concrete or non-structural concrete is uh, harmful or uh, could cause cracking, maybe the geo membrane or any geosynthetics for that purpose as a barrier can be used. Okay. Think There's the also application. Um, an application in which you can use uh, geosynthetics to repair cracking in asphalt uh, pavement, right? Yes, Doc. Actually, I have here the example. Um, uh, we called it asphalt reinforcement, and basically mm -hmm. the ones we recommend are the ones made of fiberglass. Okay. okay. So uh, what about uh, using the uh, using the geosynthetic when you're actually pouring in or reinforcing, let's say, 
the asphalt. So this is not to repair it, but when you're putting in the asphalt road, is it put in the asphalt or is it put in the foundation to the pavement? Can you come again, Doc? Okay, very often uh, we normally use the, uh, the G-Synthetic as some sort of a separator in this upgrade or in the foundation of the road. Oh, okay. in the, not in the actual pavement itself. For an asphalt pavement road, are there any applications in which you use the G-Synthetic in the asphalt itself for reinforcing yes. the asphalt? Correct, Doc. Um, so uh, first, there are two um, two common applications. One, um, as explained by uh, uh, as explained by Doc Zarco, you can use it below your road or be, uh, in the subgrade above your subgrade. Or one is directly on the asphalt layer, and the the one in the asphalt layer is the one I'm showing you to, uh, right now. We call it uh, for asphalt reinforcement. The idea there is to reinforce that um, asphalt layer uh, to increase its lifespan by two to three times. Just imagine, um, I, uh, just to give you an additional info to that, the dog's article, I was able to, um, to supervise one of our projects before in Tarlac, where we used this one. Actually, this photo was taken for that, uh, from that Tarlac project. And until now, the there was the, there's on that road on that particular section where we we were able to install this asphalt reinforcement uh, directly below the the asphalt layer. Okay. okay. Um, the, someone is asking, what's the uh, and I'm just summarizing this. What's yes, the highest uh, mechanically stabilized earth wall that you've been able to uh, that you're aware of here in the Philippines that you that you're knowledgeable about uh, as far as the application of geogrids? Uh, the, the, what do you mean, Doc? Cheapest? Meaning, what's the highest? In highest, ah, uh, highest. highest. Uh, there, uh, there, someone is asking, have, yes. uh, can it be as high as around 40 meters high? In the Philippines, our experience, uh, for, for my 10 years experience in the Maca Ferry, we were able to support already structures like 30 meters in height. Okay. Highest so far in the Philippines. But okay. our, our partner companies in India, for example, they were able to construct structures up to 80 meters. 80 okay. That's okay. high. Uh, most of the applications are in slopes, but then are there any applications improving the bearing capacity of foundations? Yes, yes. Doc. Um, that's uh, that's the one in the reinforcement um, base. That's the basal reinforcement application uh, that I have shown earlier. Uh, that's where okay. the geosynthetics can be mostly used to improve the bearing capacity of the soil. So. Okay. Um, okay. I think uh, that gives a general overview of yeah. most of the uh, questions. Uh, we'll try to, we'll forward to Adrian all of your yes, questions doc. so he can answer them uh, separately, individually, and email. Yes. Uh, but I'll ask Eric while we're doing that to, uh, to uh, make the announcements. <clears throat> okay, again, yes, sorry. Mm -hmm. thank you, Engineer Adrian. Uh, Thank very you, sir, Eric. I've been reading the feedbacks and thankful sila. Very informative nga do yung topic nyo. And actually, magali meron pa tayong quiz, ano? So, yes, ano, yes. <laughs> Noted. May mga, ano, may mga pumasok sa banga. So, yeah. Uh, I, I, I think we got it right. Ha? Congratulations to Leo Roland, Kimar Sain, Sainudin. Rufino Dangan, Celsa Salang, Frederick Librero, Luisito Carlos. I think yun yung mga nakuha kong names. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hope so, congratulations. Yes, sir. Ha? Galing, congratulations. Uh, hindi ka, even though webinar tayo, talagang nakakapag-participate sila at saka talagang nakikita. Yes, yeah, so, dapat ganun eh. Dapat talagang active. So, mm -hmm. uh, so thank you rin, Doc, Doc Mark. Okay. For moderating this uh, uh, webinar. 
again, as as Doc Mark said, uh, the questions have already instructed the Secretariat to uh, take note of all the questions posted, and then it will be emailed to Engineer Madrazo, so he can answer it, and then it will be forwarded to to the ano yung to the webinar dun sa mga nag uh, nag question para ma address yung questions niyo. Okay, so just a few announcements before we end. Uh, again, thank you to our speaker and our moderator. Uh, the Again, the membership link, you just have to do it once. Once you have done it, hindi nyo na po kailan ulitin yun. Yung mga queries po, I've been trying to answer the queries regarding uh, payment, hindi makalag in. So I forwarded it to the, to the concerned committee ng PICE. They will get back to you via email. So kung may concern pa po kayo, just let us know. Uh, the link again for the particip for the evaluation as well as the materials. Unfortunately, we're still in day one. Medyo mahirap lang po kasi uh, i-check, especially the secretary is working from home. So chine-check, binivalidate pa po yung nag-register, yung nag-attend. So iniisa-isa po, tapos yung pag-email, manually ini-email to individually sa mga participants. So medyo onting patience lang po. Basta bas, uh, we will assure you that it will get to you before at least pag natapos yung ano webinar natin until next week you will be getting all the the links for the evaluation form for the materials and then after that the certificate of attendance uh, so antayin niyo lang po and then again only those attending we have actually this is one of the largest participate ano natin ha? we have about 330 attendees today. So, Ooh. marami yun. No? <laughs> Dari. Mga pa, past two days natin, mga two, ha, almost 300. I think this, this one has the most number of attendees. So, only those attending shall get the certificate of attendance. Even though nag-register ka, kung hindi ka nag-attend, you won't be getting the certificate of attendance. Okay? Uh, tomorrow, we have May 7, 3 to 5 p.m. po ulit tayo. Our lecture series will be on project management and construction engineering. Our presenter will be Dr. Florencio Padernal. His topic is about construction management plan for a 17-kilometer drainage system for a rail project in Central Luzon. So all those who want to listen to that topic, so you're, please register for my slots pa and then please attend. So Dr. Doc, Doc Mark, meron pa po kayong gustong i-add? Doc, nakamute, nakamute. <laughs> okay, so I, I hope that you all benefited from this uh, webinar, and we hope that it's not the last one. Um, so we have other speakers lined up, but I'd like to thank Adrian again well done, for, for this webinar. So uh, I'll give you, Eric. Thanks. Thank you, Doc Mark. Thank you again, okay. Eric, can I just uh, greet someone? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'd like to greet my colleagues from UE Manila Civil Engineering mm -hmm. Department, as well as my uh, 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 my friends from De La Salle Civil Engineering Department, Aiden Dungta, also watching. So, uh, hello everyone. Also from, may nagpapabati din, say siya sir, may humahabol. Mga uh, students from UE Manila, uh, as well as uh, engineers from UE Manila, from Cagayan State University. Yan. Uh, hello. Uh, hope, hope everyone is safe. So, okay. kailangan ingat po tayo lahat. Para tayo, so, salamat. Para tayong so, this okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ayan. So, uh, yes, uh, we'll be having more of this. Uh, we're thinking of having this every month, once a month, man lang. Isolated chapter. We're really working chapter. <laughs> a lot of uh, webinar series then. So lastly, for the closing, uh, Press Bong. Mm -hmm. Press, nakamute. Nakamute kayo, Press. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yan. Okay. okay. That's it. So uh, again, overload of learnings today, yeah? Thank you very much, uh, uh, Adrian and Doc Mark. Thank you, Sir Bong. Mm -hmm. 
were uh, really uh, an uh, overload of uh, the fullness of uh, the learnings from uh, our lecturer, no? uh, Engineer Adrian. Okay, naka overtime tayo ngayon. But then, anyway, <laughs> anyway, it's really a good sign, no? And uh, of course, uh, I would like uh, also to uh, thank uh, Ma'am Proxy Bernardo, no, for uh, uh, for uh, having here with us. Masimula uh, kaya yung corona ba yung sa likod? No, no, Ma'am, kano lang yan virtual uh, background, no? But uh, you see, that's uh, uh, that would show that PICE really is uh yeah for uh, for the for fight against the, the coronavirus no? <laughs> uh, we have uh, those uh, uh, we have activities and uh, corporate social responsibility uh, that we are uh, doing in the country uh, but anyway uh, for that i would like to uh, really appreciate and uh, Give thanks to our speaker, no? Thank you, sir. Also, to Mark, uh, Eric, mm -hmm. IC National Board, uh, to everyone. Uh, this is another successful session of the webinar lecture series. So I think a big applause to all of us. Okay. Yay. And lastly, on behalf of the, Pais. <laughs> lastly, on behalf of the PIC National Board, uh, remember, no? Let us always be holy, be healthy, and be happy. Value the learnings and the blessings that our Almighty has bestowed upon us today in our lives. Always be proud to be a Filipino civil engineer. Mabuhay tayong lahat. And thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Shout po sa mga frontliners, civil engineers. Okay, so again, thank you, Bo. So see you again tomorrow for those okay. who registered. See you again for tomorrow's webinar lecture series. So good evening and stay safe. Okay. Thank you, Bo. Congratulations thank you. again, thank you. Eric and President Bong. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Yung ano na lang, yung video ni... Okay. Thanks, uh,